everyone. Welcome back to Vedic Life Coaching. Thank you so much for joining me. Now, in today's overview, we're going to take a look at March. And I think March is going to be a really nice month. I think it's going to be a bit of a chill out month, actually. It's got a different feel to it. To me, it's got this feel that we're winding down the year. And as there's a lot of energy moving through uh, Aquarius now and Pisces, we're going to see that you know, we're, we're winding down the year. We're also winding down a really big uh, a, a really big, you know, thing with Rahu and Ketu being in Cancer and Capricorn. We're saying goodbye to that as well because that's going to shift. And if you would have watched my Rahu Ketu video, that's now live where I talk about that shift and I'll link that at the end. I also did a video where I talked about Ketu and Saturn um, being together in conjunction. So that video I'll also link at the very end. And this big shift of Rahu Ketu axis really happens March 23rd, I've got. But you know, we'll start to notice a difference, I believe, April onwards. It can take a bit of time for the energies to settle in. So we're being given a bit of time, I believe. I think we're give, being given a bit of time, a little bit of a breather by the universe. I'm hoping that March is a fairly quiet month up until, say, the end of March where there's shifts, things could get more exciting, things could get more interesting, definitely end of March onwards. Um, we'll do a quick overview. I've, I'm going to break this into a quick overview. We've got the moon dates, the month that's been, and this month ahead. And then I'm going to do um, a little bit of a Q&A session. There was some interesting comments on the Rahu Ketu video and that sparked an idea of something that I want to talk about in this uh, month's overview. So I'll break all of this down in the jump links below so you can jump ahead to the bit that you want and feel free to watch. Maybe you want to watch one or two chunks and then your mini reading um, you can piece it together how you like and I'm really enjoying these jump links because it's like those choose your own adventure stories. I don't know if you ever read those when you were a kid. I used to read those when I was a kid. They were one of my favorite things to read. Uh, so this is like a choose your own adventure story as it tends to be. I love these jump links. Right, so Rahu Ketu dates are live. Yes, um, Ketu Saturn video is live. Mid-April onwards is gonna be more interesting. In terms of my brief overview, I've had a look at mid-April onwards. I mean, that's beautiful. The sun exalted in Aries, Venus exalted in Pisces. There's some lovely stuff happening there. We've got Jupiter dipping his toe into Sagittarius for a short while from 30th of March to 23rd April. That's kind of interesting. Um, it's brief, but, but again, there's a slightly different tone with that energy there. Uh, the moon dates. So we've got new moon in Aquarius, Purva Bhadrapada, 6 March uh, 2019 at about 4 p.m. UK time. And then we've got the full moon, 21st March 2019 in Virgo, Uttra Falguni. That is going to be cool as well. Uh, then we've got the 6th of March, Mercury leaves Pisces to cover old ground in Aquarius. So there's a retrograde happening and that's what I'm going to be covering in the little mini breakdown. I'm just going to be covering the Mercury retrograde. So it's a very light breakdown this time. I'm not going to go too much in depth at all. So this will be, we're going to fly through all this content today. Uh, the month that's been, what's been going on in the month. So as you know, I like to match up the month that's been. I like to see, okay, are there any big events or any newsworthy stories that I can match up astrologically? But the first one is the Liam Neeson controversy. I watched some videos about him and that happened in the past month. And to me, that kind of had a tone of Saturn Ketu because it felt like radical honesty. That's really what I took from it. And I saw this person being hugely honest. And um, I thought, wow, that's, that's quite incredible. And I feel like it's going to be those kind of conversations that might be had around that Saturn Ketu kind of time. Just as we had with the Me Too movement, you know, um, which was the Ketu Mars, could the Saturn Ketu be around 
that kind of thing. I, I think it well could be, you know. Um, America is doing a lot of cultural cleaning up around how it treated um, how, how it treated people, you know, of, of different races, of different colors and that kind of thing. I watched a video by a young blogger. It was fantastic. She took on um, the controversy surrounding these top designer brands like Gucci and different labels. I can't remember what they all were, but these brands are putting out um, certain clothes and badges and buttons and things or something like that that have kind of racial undertones and that's been a thing that's been going on and she was just honest about how she grew up and how she as a young white lady in the south she didn't know about racism and you know her video got a lot of good feedback from um, people of all races I was one of them that commented on her video I thought she did a really great job so there is some of this happening in the collective and to me it feels like cleansing and the cleaning up of past karma and it feels good quite frankly and I think that radical honesty can be confronting it can be difficult but it's necessary for understanding and growth and I think that there's a lot that can come out of this time so I did notice that Liam Neeson thing as being something that could be worth mentioning regarding Saturn Ketu the other item of news which gosh what a piece of news this one is uh, it's King Karl Lagerfeld the Kaiser has taken leave of the stage of life you know that's a really really massive um, news event and he has been such an inspiration in my life he's a huge inspiration to me now doing what I'm doing because and you might think, how is that? How is You're an astrologer. How does Karl Lagerfeld inspire you? Well, when I look at his career, he took the dying brand that was Chanel and it wasn't cool to take an old brand like that. Um, not cool at all. People weren't doing it, but he did it. He went in there and he not only revived that business, but he grew the category. People were saying that nobody wants to buy handmade clothes in Paris are you mad that costs too much money who wants to do that these days modern kids don't like this not only did he pick that up but he grew the category he he created desire in people you know and and I heard someone say that in one of the press things that I watched this thing of creating desire and again if you look at three seven and eleven the air houses desire right they're the karma houses so that's just you know that's something that he did but you see that's why he inspires me because a lot of people will say um, just as people would say to him who wants to spend a hundred thousand pounds on a dress uh, you know someone might say to me well who's interested in sidereal Vedic astrology no one you know, and I'm going no that's not true you know and I'm coming in and I want to you know grow this so um, that's why he's a big inspiration to me now why is this such a newsworthy thing astrologically I mean this is just poetry in motion right here um, he left uh, he made his transition on the 19th of Feb now what was happening on the 19th of Feb it was the full moon in Maga Nakshatra Maga Nakshatra is royalty it's the Nakshatra of kings and this man was known as the Kaiser he was known as the king and he leaves this earth on a full moon and it's a gateway really um, I think it's very special and auspicious when people leave during a full moon from what I understand and uh, of all the different full moons he could have left he left on the nakshatra of kings the full moon that's there in the nakshatra of kings it's so incredible and to me this is proof of the sidereal Vedic system to me this is proof that um, the sidereal Vedic system has got it right because in Western astrology it's a Virgo full moon now Carl's not going to leave on a Virgo full moon you know he's leaving on a Leo moon for sure um, that's that's how I'm seeing that you know 
so these were the things that I identified in the month that's been that were quite astrological in nature and, and feel like they are matching up with the sidereal Vedic system. As for this month, uh, as I said earlier, you know, I think it's a chill down phase before mid-April where the sun steps into Aries. So I think the universe is giving us some time to unwind a bit. And of course, you know, Pisces is that part of the zodiac where we rest, we relax, don't we? Because we've just had that massive journey around the zodiac. Uh, and before we hit the ground running and started all over again in Aries, we need some time of rest. So this is a time of rest for us as well. Uh, it's really interesting when I was coming up with the notes for this month, you know what popped into my head because we've got uh, Mercury retrograde happening. So I'm thinking about it. I think this was yesterday and these lines pop into my head, Freddie Mercury. Is this the real life? Is this just fantasy? Caught in a landslide, no escape from reality. Open your eyes, look up to the skies and see. And for me, I haven't had song lyrics come for a monthly before, but this month those song lyrics came in. And I think that that's the activity we all need to be doing. We're gonna be having this Mercury retrograde across Pisces and Aquarius. And really it is this thing of, you know, we've got the beautiful, lofty, high octane, dreamy energies of Pisces. We've got the collective consciousness of Aquarius and this Mercury retrograde happening there. You know, you could be asking yourself the question, is this the real life? Is this just fantasy? What am I doing with my life? You know, but in a contemplative way, not in a negative way, in a nice sort of relaxed you're being given time to chill kind of way. That's the feeling that I'm getting. So let's see how this pans out. Um, you know, we've got the, after the 23rd, I've got a note here, after the 23rd, expect changes. Things could get more dramatic around there. Things could get more dr dramatic around that full moon, 21st of March. Um, and as I've been observing the months, I do notice that at the end of the month, that's where things get interesting or kick off a little bit or, you know, um, where big events tend to happen. So we could expect some changes after, say, 21st, 23rd of March. We've got the Rahu Ketu shift happening. That's a big event that's coming up. Um, Venus steps into the 11th. Right now she's in the 10th. I think she's a bit bored there, you know. Um, that's why for the monthlies, I didn't go into it in too much detail or depth this time because there's not much happening. Aries, Mars in Aries, he's happy. Everyone seems pretty cool. Venus is just bored in the tent there. It's kind of like, what is that, like Paris Hilton at a board meeting or something? You know, she's sitting there thinking, I want to go shopping or I want to get my nails done. So it's that kind of energy right now. So the exciting and interesting thing is Mercury, and that's what I'm going to be focusing on in the mini readings. Now, I wanted to go over this in a bit more detail. Now, what is this? Which chart is truly mine? So in the jump links, I might call it something like that. Which chart is truly mine? This is a conversation that came up between two of my viewers, one who I know, Suraj, hello, we know each other, and, uh, and also a lovely viewer, Denise. So I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Now you guys were having a bit of a conversation, it was fascinating, it was all about uh, Rahu and Ketu and the fact that when they move, because I was chatting about the nodes and I was getting a little bit technical and I was talking about interpolated true node and things like that. Now the conversation here was about stationary and direct Rahu Ketu axis. And that was a really good thing that you mentioned, Suraj, because I need to do some research on that and hopefully I'll do a video on that. Uh, I don't know when, but that, that is a topic that I want to explore more on the channel for sure. Um, so I'm definitely going to be exploring that in some more depth. And then in that conversation, Denise came and asked a really great question about, so his nodes jump. Uh, I believe when you, when you switch from true node to me, there's a jumping that happens and it's like, oh my God, you know, you're this way or you're this way or this way or, you know, it's just this kind of the houses jump, right? And you're wondering, I think your question was something around how do I know which one to go for? And I wanted to answer this, even though it was a technical question, 
I wanted to answer it from a philosophical point of view because this has affected me personally and this is um, something that was very, very influential in my decision to even go down the sidereal Vedic road because originally, you know, all my life I grew up watching Karen Morgold on TV and I grew up, you know, going to the back of a magazine and reading the Western signs. And then, of course, I progressed, I think 2008, those kind of years I was reading Susan Miller every month and then I was watching Kelly Rosano on a regular basis and then I started reading books and Liz Green and, you know, I was really getting into all this stuff and then and I, I was studying celebrity charts and all that kind of thing as well and, you know, I noticed wow Mary Donaldson she has so many trines you know it was like this so my whole life was western and then and I had I knew my all my signs I knew them all back of my hand knew it knew it yeah I knew my chart really well and then I tried to get a western reading I was trying to as well study the western system I thought oh maybe I could study it at Cambridge or Oxford or I know they have courses and I, I was really going strong down that road then all of a sudden the universe just kind of picks me up and goes right here you go sidereal vedic somehow i find this sidereal vedic system and i'm checking it out i'm looking at it i I get a reading done and all of a sudden i am completely different so not only was it like a shift of axis it was like a shift of everything. It was like a new sun, a new moon, a new rising, a new, just a new everything. And the rising was very different to my other one. I mean, everything was just so different. And here I am faced with two entirely different charts. Now, let's say, let's take a look at different systems. So, so that's sidereal Vedic, there's tropical Vedic, there's Western, right? Um And I've had a look at myself in so many different modalities as well. I've also had a look at myself in human design. You can check out sandyfreshy.com for that. She's brilliant. Uh, Human design. I've had a look at myself through Maya Briggs. I've had a look at myself through, what is those, Enneagrams. And there's this four color thing. And there's this, I mean, there's just so many different things. I've done Machiavelli tests and this and that and all these different things. So you can slice and dice yourself in so many different systems in so many different ways, you can come up with 10 different charts, right? And here are two ways of figuring out who you are. So with Sidereal Vedic, that really popped out at me because it really spoke to me because finally I had an astrological explanation for the past, you know, 30 odd years of my life. Finally, a system explained And my big long career in advertising, it's written in the stars in the sidereal Vedic system. I can see it. It's right there. You put me in the other systems and it's gone. You can't see it. You can see it. You could make a story around it, but it's not obvious. So I'm able to see, match up the past and see, yep, my past absolutely matches this chart, right? Let's say, because the question was about the axis shift, that could be very minor, right? That could be very mild and very minor, and that could be hard to match up your past with that. So here's my answer to you. Look at the two charts, or look at 10 charts, or look at yourself in several different systems. Slice and dice yourself and look at, look at everything. Put everything out on a table and ask yourself, who do I want to be and what do I want to create? And that's what I did. For me, the sidereal Vedic system, the chart that comes from that, it gave me this vision and I was excited. I was like, yeah, of everything that's here, I want to create that. I absolutely want to create that one. And you know, when you plug me into the tropical Vedic, it's really interesting. Uh, I lose my debilitated planet, but then I lose my exalted planet, right? And I'm kind of like a bipolar person there because a bipolar person doesn't want to take depression medication, because they don't want to miss out on the high, right? So I, I, I kind of went, oh, no, I don't. Tropical Vedic is boring. I want this one. I want this one that has this kind of crazy high, but I go, all right, I got a debilitation. Okay, who cares? I'll take it, right? So like this, we can weigh up our charts. We can weigh up all these different things 
And we can choose. And for me, the most appealing thing is what do I want to create? Right? Because I get to choose and I get to create. And that was really what I wanted to say there um, in, in response to that question. So I really hope that's helpful, Denise. And it's a philosophical answer to your technical question. I appreciate that. So I hope that that's not dissatisfying or, or I hope that this helps. I thought about it from a technical viewpoint as well in terms of the different nodes and, and you know, calculating things and the precision and all of that. And it got me thinking about science and it got me thinking about, and this is very ninth house, this is very ninth house that you've got, let's say, um, I had one here. Oh no, I don't have it. I had a ruler. What have I done with it? What have I done with my ruler? Well, anyway, you have a ruler, right? And you can see four millimeters. And you can see one millimeter. But then the deeper you go into one millimeter, you realize that it's, well, it's made up of all these nanometers. So then you go deeper into the nanometer and you come to atoms. You go deeper into the atom and then you find space. And you're like, there's more space in this atom than there is stuff. That it's very ninth house, measurement. When you measure something in the external world, you're not gonna get a perfect thing. It's never gonna be perfect because the deeper you drill, a trap door opens, right? So one millimeter and then a trap door opens. Oh, you've got nanometers, you've got all these nanometers. Oh, okay, let's go into the nanometer, go in there. Or you keep going, you keep drilling down, you get down to the atom, you drill into that and you just find space. Hang on a minute, what, space? All these trapdoors keep opening and you keep going down these rabbit holes. And that's very ninth house. And ninth house people love that. Ninth house people can't get enough of that. But that's the thing. I, you know, I, I've got more seventh house energy than I do ninth house. And seventh house is a bit more business person-like. And a business person is kind of like, well, hang on a minute. Well, you, you could do that infinitely. You could keep going down trapdoors. And, and keep doing all of that. And that's the thing, if you're wanting to be an astrologer, then that's great. Then you have to sit with 10 charts and you have to, you know, wrestle all these details. You have to really get to know that really, really well. So if your aim in life is to be an astrologer, then absolutely wrestle with all these calculations. But if your aim is to be something else, then that entire activity is, is a drain on your time and quite possibly a waste of your time as well. You know, if, if, if your heart is in something else, if you want to be an artist, if you want to be a musician, if you want to be, um, you know, an actor on stage or whatever your dream is, right? And what can happen with astrology is that it can be, you know, this place of rabbit holes and it can be a bit of a trap. The ego will love it because it's keeping you away from your light and your dream and what you what it is you're meant to do so astrology can be a bit of a, a bit of a time drain a bit of a trap a bit of a you know um i was thinking about that as well today that like if if you want to be an astrologer oh terrific these are the conversations to have but if you don't then then look at the 10 charts and pick the one commit to something go okay i believe in this and that's also another point I wanted to raise about the sidereal Vedic thing is that for me, I've chosen this system and I know that I'm going to use it to hone my intuition. Hi guys, sorry about that. The camera just got cut. It does that at the 24 minute mark and I can't remember what I was saying because I had to copy across what was in the memory card and because the camera overheats and it needs like five minutes. The camera needs more rest than I do. Gosh. Anyway, uh, I think I'd, I was at this point where I was saying that I'm using the sidereal Vedic system to hone my intuition. I think that's what I was saying. And yeah, I mean, so this is why, this is the reason why I would gladly consult a Western astrologer. I would gladly consult a um, tropical Vedic astrologer. Of course I would, because in a sense, you could see them as different tarot decks as well. You know, they're extremely complex, like out of this world complex tarot decks. But, you know, when, a, when you see a tarot reader and they've honed their intuition on one set of cards and they're really excellent at it, right? 
So in the similar way, that's how I view these systems as well, that, you know, a, a person will hone their intuition on one system. Then what happens is the divine takes over and the divine, you know, sh should be uh, quite, quite present in doing a, a reading, you know, like as in um, the divine should, should be talking through the person kind of thing. So that's um, one of the things I think there. Oh, I've got so much to say. I, I, I've got one last note here, and that is um, this thing of M. Knight. Now, I'm, I'm pretty sure, is, is it Shyamalan? Shyamalan? M. Knight Shyamalan. He's this brilliant Indian director who was on Stephen Colbert, and I think it was recent. I don't know. I watched it anyway. It came up on my dashboard. I thought, oh, yeah, let's watch that. And um, he was saying in that, interview with Stephen Colbert he said this thing of um, he was talking about energy he was like I'm not sure if I can talk about this on your channel on your on your talk show um, but it was saying that you know from what I believe you put blurry out and you get blurry back and I thought wow I love that because that's Abraham Hicks teaching basically summed up in one line so that was terrific that he said that and that's also what I wanted to say about this activity of having 10 different charts in front of you and which one do I choose or which one is more me if you can't look at your past and match it up then you've got to look at your future and say what do I want to create now the reason I brought him up you put blurry out you get blurry back it occurred to me today, another story popped into my mind and I wanted to share this story with you and then we'll get into the little mini readings and I'm going to absolutely fly through those. They're really short this time because I wanted to tell these stories and I wanted to tell this story in particular. So I started thinking about Arjuna, the great archer in Indian mythology and I might end up misquoting the story guys so if you want you can you're very welcome to correct me in the comments below but this is what I remember in my head I'm sure my parents told me this story and I've read it as well and I'm just really pulling this out of my head I haven't looked it up or any of that but as I remember when he's getting his archery training uh, it's brilliant the instructor is there and there are three students there and they put a wooden bird on the branch and each student gets to go up and the first student goes up and the instructor says you know, he's just about to do his thing and try and get the bird and the, the instructor says what do you see? You know, tell me what you see and this student thinks well gosh I, I better tell in full detail everything I see you know because you need to have sharp eyes to, to be an archer and so he goes into great detail, well I see the clouds, I see the branch, I see the tree, uh, I see the light coming through the clouds, I see several birds, I see you know, the leaves, I see the glistening dew on, on the leaves, I, I see everything in sharp detail, high definition detail. So then he does his move, he lets the arrow go, it misses the bird. The second student comes up. And he steps up to the plate and he's about to do his thing, you know, try and hit the bird. And the instructor says, what do you see? And he says, well, I see, I see the branch and I, and I see the bird as well. And he lets his arrow go and he clips the tail of the bird a little bit. Now it's Arjuna's turn. Oh, I love this. And he says... I just, this is so cool. This is the bit, this is the bit that I know, this is the punchline basically, it's the good bit. The instructor says, what do you see? And he says, I see the center of the eye of the bird. And boom, he gets it. He hits the bird. I see the center of the eye of the bird. Right? That's what we want to do in life. We want to try and with precision get down to our life purpose. We want to with precision, we want to see the center of the eye of the bird. And I was thinking about this this morning and I was thinking about all the different charts of my life that I've seen and that sidereal Vedic, I, I found my bird at least. You know, I don't know if I've got the center of the eye of the bird just yet, but I've at least got the bird now. <laughs> 
<laughs> and I think I've had kind of blurry vision all my life, but it's been refining and I've been getting down to and I've been cutting out the clouds and I've been cutting out the trees and I've been cutting out the branches and I've been cutting out a lot of things. And I used to be a workshop junkie. I used to go to workshop after workshop after workshop. And finally, I've found sidereal Vedic astrology and I've found something that I want to pour my life into now. You know, I can see myself for this Satan Mahadasha, I can see myself, I just want to do this at least, you know, if I can. Now, will it, you know, happen that way? I don't know. Because the other thing I also believe is that we've got to leave room, as they say, dessert, leave room for dessert. I think leave room for miracles, right? Maybe God's got an even better vision for me. Right, so I, I don't 100% know. So, you know, there's commitment and there's leaving room for miracles. There's all of these kind of things that we have to deal with. But I tell you, I want to be like Arjuna. I want to see the, the center of the eye of the bird. That's what I, I want to be like that. And what if any of these systems, where is that written? Nowhere. That's my free will saying I want to be like him. That's not written anywhere. That's my choice. That's me going, shopping around and going, I want to be like that person. And then, and then developing that within myself and creating that within myself. And we do have to create that within ourselves. Caroline Mace, she talks about the fact that we're not born with self-esteem. We have to build that. And that's a very big part of the process of life. And that's why I can't just call myself an astrologer because a big part of astrology, it is coaching, it is psychology, it is looking at all these things, you know. So this links into that M. Night Shyamalan thing as well. I hope I'm saying his name right. But, I mean, what he said is put blurry out and get blurry back. Absolutely. What you want is you want the center of the eye of the bird. So if you're in conflict about two different charts that are representing you, pick the one that you want to create. Pick the center of the eye of the bird that I want this. You know, and if, if you're not finding it through astrology, there are other systems, there are other healing modalities, there are other things, there are other ways that we can go about finding at least our bird. You want to find your bird, right? So I feel like I found my bird. I, I found a terrific bird in, in sidereal Vedic astrology. I'm having a great time with this system. Uh, I'm really, really, really enjoying it. So, so yeah, that's. I could go on. I could talk for another hour about all that, but really I'm pressed for time. And as I just said, I've got to be a bit more seventh house and we've got to get, keep going because... I love the rabbit holes and the trap doors and, 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 and the journeys that you go on in the ninth house. You know, it's, it's, it's mental gymnastics and it's wonderful. But I love it. But equally, uh, let's get a bit seventh house and, and let's get on with the show. So I think we're going to get into Aries moon. That's what we're going to do. Aries moon. Welcome. Let's take a look at what's happening for you. Now, this time I'm only really going to go into Mercury retrograde for all signs. So it's a very little mini reading that we're getting today um, because you've got other things to take a look at. You've got my Rahu Ketu video to take a look at. You've got my Saturn Ketu video to take a look at. So there's quite a lot to digest. So this time, just taking a look at Mercury re Retrograde. That's happening across your 12th and 11th houses. This is a chance for you to contemplate that big internal vision for your life. Um, you've also got the Sun in Pisces as well. So... You could also be covering old ground with friendships or with work colleagues. Perhaps you're going to have a blast from the past. Perhaps you're going to hear from a work colleague that you haven't heard from in a long time. That could be something that happens. So Aries moon, this is also a bit of chill down, wind down, relax time, right? For everybody across the board. So Aries moon, I hope you enjoy that. I hope you enjoy contemplating this big internal vision for your life. Uh, that's what I've got down there for you. I'm going to welcome Taurus Moon. Taurus Moon, welcome. Today we're just having a look at Mercury Retrograde. We're going to fly through this really brief for every single sign. So Mercury Retrograde is happening across your 11th and 10th houses. And you could be covering old ground within your professional networking circles. Uh, perhaps covering old ground with work contacts. Maybe you might have a colleague get in touch with you. This is very similar to Aries Moon as well, um, but you might have an old colleague get in touch with you. This is also time to contemplate, I mean, the structure of your work-life balance, 
um, as well. That might be something that in a very practical way that you want to take a look at and see what you can do there. So it could be some restructuring around some of that. But yeah, I do have a, a message from a co-worker about the blast from the past, which Aries had that as well. So Taurus Moon, I also hope you use this time to relax a little bit. We are having a bit of a chill down phase before the world the, the year cranks up. The year is really going to crank up mid-April onwards. It's going to get exciting. Uh, sun's going to go into Aries. It's, it's a much more exciting time. So I'm seeing things are pretty quiet at the moment. So Taurus Moon, it's been lovely. Uh, Gemini Moon, Gemini Moon, welcome. Really quick one today. We're not spending much time with, with anyone because I'm only just looking at Mercury retrograde. For you, that's happening across your 10th and 9th houses. So for you, this is a, th a thing of rethinking career from a perspective of your soul expression. So for you, I've got a quote by Heidi Sawyer. She's one of my favorite people ever. I have trained with her personally. I've done... <coughs> excuse me I've done a lot of work with her she's absolutely fantastic um, so I do recommend her as, a, as a, a coach or a mentor now she had this brilliant quote she said in one of her newsletters she said people wander from one situation to another using work as a means of expression rather than expression as a means of work I'll read it again it's very good people wander from one situation to another using work as a means of expression rather than expression as a means of work. I really love that. And I really feel that finally, through what I'm doing now, I'm getting an opportunity to have expression as my means of work. I'm kind of being myself through my expression. Whereas before I was wandering from one job to another, kind of trying to fit in, you know. And I, and the, Jim and I mean, this is not about to say that you should um, that everyone has to become self-employed or everyone has to start their own business. No, not at all. The corporate world is wonderful. Um, you know, a lot of fun to be had. And it's very nice to have that security. So if you're there, how can you be in the place where you are, however you work, but it be more of a, an expression of who you are or you come out more through your work? That could be something really good to contemplate during this time. So Gemini Moon, thank you so much. And we're going to welcome Cancer Moon. Cancer Moon, welcome. This is just really super quick. Today we're just taking a look at Mercury Retrograde, which is happening across your ninth and eighth houses. This is a really good time to just make sure that the way that you communicate is really clear, especially your communications with your dad and your in-laws, right? So definitely family members, senior family members, uh, or anyone of status, anyone of rank, gurus as well, making sure that communication is nice and clear there. Um, you know, and maybe if it's a guru, maybe you're going back to an old guru, or maybe you're um, reviewing course materials that you did with someone uh, in the past. That could be really nice. You know, I've got all these kind of old Abraham Hicks clips saved in a bookmarks folder that I'm meaning to go back and re-listen to them all one day. And yeah, I might do that during Mercury Retrograde, actually. Um, it's a good time to be communicating. Yeah, take your time to be communicating with family this month as well. So Cancer Moon, thank you so much. And Leo Moon, we're going to welcome Leo Moon. Uh, this time we're just flying through, just a really mini reading this time, very, very mini, micro, nano reading. Um, we're taking a look at Mercury Retrograde, which is happening in your 8th and 7th house. So I've got here a note, make sure you're clear in communications with your in-laws, especially with your spouse. Um, take your time, maybe don't, you know, just, just uh, be clear in communications. And take your time, take your time in communicating Take your time with any contracts. Take your time with anything to do with work, co-workers. You might want to recheck, uh, re-look over something. Before you hit send on an important email, just make sure, okay, it's going to the right person. Really important. Don't want the embarrassment of sending it to someone, the wrong person. Um, so it's just that kind of thing really this time there for you, Leo Moon. So thanks so much for stopping by. And we've got Virgo Moon. Virgo Moon, welcome. Uh, this time we're just flying through. I'm just doing a little, really little mini reading, little nano reading, micro reading. I'm going to have a look at Mercury retrograde, which is happening in your seventh and sixth houses. So all I'm going to say here is just be clear in your communications 
with your co-workers and your spouse. Yes, this is very similar to Leo Moon um, reading. Uh, there's some crossover there. Check and recheck your work before sending it to clients. Um, check and recheck any contracts. Uh, it's a good time to be thorough. Perhaps you might want to do something with your health regime. Perhaps you might want to have a rethink about the vitamins you're taking. Maybe you've got a whole bunch of vitamins that you take on a regular basis. Maybe you need to check them out. And I definitely did that the other day. There was a whole bunch of things that were out of date. I had to chuck them out. This might be a good time to do that. So thank you, Virgo Moon. Uh, we're going to welcome Libra Moon. Libra Moon, welcome. This is a really fast reading that we're doing, really micro nano reading. We're just having a look at Mercury retrograde, which is happening in your sixth and fifth houses. So all I've got here is um, pay extra attention in all your communications, uh, especially regarding work documents and anything to do with your creativity. If you are launching something, if you are launching a new website, if you're launching a new look and feel of your business, maybe you're launching your artwork or something in a gallery or something, take extra time, pay extra attention to detail, just make sure everything goes fine there. Um, you know, on this, I'm, I'm actually even considering when I do my April outlook, I shouldn't do it during the Mercury retrograde. Who knows? We'll see how we go. Um, but yeah, it's looking good. But, you know, just take your time, especially with anything creative that you're doing. So thanks for stopping by Libra Moon and Scorpio Moon. Welcome. Scorpio Moon, we're doing a really, really quick reading this time. Just a really micro, nano, quick reading we're looking at um, mercury retrograde only um, because there's been so much other news you know and i made other videos and there's a lot for you to look at so this mercury retrograde is happening over your fourth uh, your fifth and fourth house houses and yeah i mean this one's just kind of this kind of nice it's a time to go slow and relax and chill out scorpio moon um but go easy in all your communications, especially with your children, with your family members, especially with your mum. Uh, think before speaking, all that kind of nice stuff. But um, take your time, especially anything to do as well with property matters. You might want to check and recheck contracts uh, if there's anything like that going on. But, um, you know, I think this is a nice time to unwind really as well. So I wish you well, Scorpio Moon. And we're now going to welcome Sagittarius Moon. Sagittarius Moon, welcome. Uh, we have a really quick reading this time. We've just taken a look at Mercury in retrograde. And that's happening across your fourth and third houses. So this could be a time of rethinking some aspect of your home. Uh, perhaps you're rearranging the furniture. I don't know. Could be quite practical for you, Sagittarius Moon. Uh, could be a time of covering old ground with friends or siblings as well. Perhaps there's a blast from the past. Perhaps you hear from someone that you haven't heard from in a really long time and that could be from your friendship circle, could be a sibling as well. Uh, so that's something there. And um, it's also a really good time to rest as well. And Sagittarius Moon, you need to rest. <laughs> I think I've been saying that quite a bit in all the readings. So Sagittarius Moon, it's been lovely chatting and we're going to welcome Capricorn Moon. Capricorn Moon, welcome. This is a very quick reading today micro reading, nano reading. We're just having a look at Mercury retrograde and that's happening across your third and second houses. So this is pretty simple for you. Be careful how you speak with your family members. Uh, take time with your co-workers, take time with your peers. Um, check and recheck any emails and work communications. So it's that Mercury retrograde stuff, you know, um, just take just take your extra time I suppose it's a good time to be practical I mean I always think mercury when it's in retrograde we've got more mercurial energy to work with because it's closer to the earth yes because the earth is flying faster yes so you know you've got some more hands-on energy available to you especially with that third house activity there so thank you so much Capricorn moon we are going to welcome Aquarius moon Aquarius moon welcome thank you so much for joining now I'm just going to check on the time quickly how are we doing uh, oh, 20 minutes, so I'm going to fly through. I've been flying through everybody's though. Don't worry, I'm, you know, I'm not skimping on quality here. Everybody's been getting a micro reading um, because I'm just doing Mercury retrograde across all the signs. This is a really easy month. You know, we don't have to do too much. April's going to get exciting. Wait for April. Uh, so this Mercury retrograde is happening across your second and first houses. This could be a nice time to reinvent your image. You know, maybe it's time for a wardrobe refresh. 
spring is coming, maybe you want to get some spring colors going on, maybe you want to change things up a bit. Um, you might be updating how you sell yourself through the written word, so through your CV, through business materials, maybe through your website, through your LinkedIn, maybe it's time for a bit of a refresh, Aquarius Moon. So um, I really like this, it's a really nice practical reinventing of your image type time. So I hope you enjoy that energy, Aquarius Moon, and we're now going to welcome Pisces Moon. Pisces Moon, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. This is a really fast reading and I should be able to make it before the camera passes out because um, we're coming up to the 24 minute mark. We are doing a super micro nano reading that I'm, everybody's getting like one or two minutes this time. Um, so don't feel like I'm skimping or anything. That's just how this is today. Uh, we're only looking at Mercury retrograde. That's the only exciting thing that's happening really. Everything else is a bit sort of humdrum. So um, the Mercury retrograde is happening across your first and twelfth houses. Now, Pisces, I hardly need to say anything for you here because you got this is your territory. You know what you're doing here. This is this is going deeply spiritual. You know, nurturing yourself. This is Mercury. You, you're going to be able to, you know, the Mercury with the little antenna. You're going to be able to draw maybe some brilliant ideas from beyond the veil you've also you're also going to have sun nearby they kind of do a crossover thing it's really nice look this is just great for you and I feel like I almost don't need to say what you need to do because you're Pisces moon you know you know so well and I think the moon is going to be any of you who are writers oh my god it's great energy for writing it's great energy for you writing creative ideas pulling from beyond the veil um, really, really nice energies. And let me just quickly tell you the dates again, because if you miss the intro, the dates are 6th of March, um, last until the 28th of March. So that is all I have for you today, everyone. And thank you so much for stopping by. Thank you so much for watching. Thanks so much for all your comments and for interacting. Um, it's just really great as well to, to interact with you guys. It's a lot of fun. So I'm going to leave it there and I look forward to seeing you next time.